Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at writing linear equations given two points on the line. And we're going to look at them in two different ways. We're going to look at slope-intercept form and we're going to look at writing them in standard form. So slope-intercept form, you might be familiar, it's y equals mx plus b. So to be able to write an equation in slope-intercept form, we need to know the slope and we need to figure out the y-intercept in some way, shape, or form. When I write in slope-intercept form, I usually use the intermediary step of putting it in point-slope form, which is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. I like using this form and then distributing m and adding y plus 1 to both sides, um, rather than figuring out the slope and then going back into y equals mx plus b. I just find that there's fewer mistakes and it's about the same amount of time, so you can decide which one that you like better and go with that. When we write an equation in standard form, that's of the form ax plus by is equal to c, and we have some rules about standard form. So standard form a, b, and c are integers, and usually a is a positive integer, so that's a big, big thing there. And then also um, a, b, and c have no, they're relatively prime, that, so they have no common factors, all three of them. It could be that a and b have a common factor, but all three of them don't have any common factors besides one. All right, let's get to it. So again, we're going to look at it in slope-intercept form and writing it in standard form, and it's going to be passing through these two points. So the only thing that we can really do when we have two points and we want to see the line that goes through them, the only thing we can do is calculate the slope. To determine the slope, we say y sub 2 minus y sub 1, the change in y over the change in x, or rise over run. Change in y over change in x, and we can call this one x1, y1 and this one x2, y2, and let's plug in to figure out slopes. We have m equals y2, 4, minus y1, negative 1. Be careful here with the minus negative. The minus is part of the formula, and then y sub 1 happens to be negative as well, over negative 4 minus negative 2. Again, be careful with that negative. In the numerator, minus negative is the same thing as adding a positive, so 4 minus negative 1 is equivalent to 4 plus 1, which would be 5. And in the denominator, negative 4 minus negative 2. Minus negative is the same as adding a positive, so we can just change that. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So we end up with a slope, I'm just going to pull the negative out in front, of negative 5 over 2. So now from here, we have the slope, and we actually know two points on the line. Um, for slope-intercept form, we only need one of the points. So if one of those points looks friendlier to work with, use that point. The one that I labeled x1, y1 is just fine, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to say, okay, x1, y1 is negative 2, negative 1. And the slope is negative 5 over 2. So I'm going to plug these into point slope form, and then from point slope form, I'm going to write it in slope intercept form. So this would become y minus negative 1 equals negative 5 over 2 times x minus negative 2. This minus negative becomes a plus positive, so we get y plus 1 is equal to negative 5 over 2 times x plus 2. Next I'm going to distribute the negative 5 over 2 to the two terms in parentheses, and I get y plus 1 is equal to negative 5 over 2x, and then when I distribute to 2, that's negative 5 over 2 times 2 over 1. The 2's end up canceling, and I end up with negative 5, so minus 5. Last step, get y by itself, so I'll subtract 1 from both sides. And slope-intercept form, I'm going to put it right here. We have y equals negative 5 over 2x minus 6. So this was step 1. Step 2 was uh, to write it in standard form. So for standard form, remember what that is. That's ax plus by is equal to c. So we want to get the x term and the y term on the same side. So I'm going to use my slope-intercept form, and I'm going to add 5 over 2x to both sides. So that's going to give me 5 over 2x plus y is equal to negative 6. Now, on the previous slide, I mentioned that standard form, we have integer coefficients where x has a positive integer coefficient. 5 over 2 is not an integer. Um, it's the only one that's not right. y has a coefficient of 1, which is fine, and negative 6 is an integer, fine. So what we want to do is we want to multiply by the least common multiple of the denominator. Since there's only one, I'm going to multiply each term by 2. So when I multiply each term by 2, the 2 
and the 5 over 2 are going to give me 5x, then 2 times y will be 2y equals negative 12. And there's my standard form, which was part 2. So those are two different ways that we can express the same equation, and both of these are equations that have two points that we know of on them, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 4, 4. Let's look at another example. So in this example, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to write the slope-intercept form and the standard form. Let's see what we have. So first, we're going to figure out slope. So I'm going to label this in preparation for slope. 2. And slope is given by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that would be 6 minus negative 1 over negative 7 minus negative 7. In the numerator, minus negative becomes plus positive. I have 7 over. In the denominator, minus negative becomes plus positive. Uh-oh, I have 0. We can't divide by 0. That indicates to us that our slope is undefined. When the slope is undefined, that's a special type of line. Do you know what type of line that is? That is a vertical line. So we're talking about a vertical line here, and vertical lines are of the form x equals a. So we want to go back to our points and look, here x is negative 7 and here x is negative 7. So yeah, this is a vertical line. So we don't have to worry about slope-intercept form. We can't write it in slope-intercept form. I guess we're going to write it in standard form and we're just going to say x equals negative 7. And that's all we can do. There's no slope-intercept form for this. We can only write it in standard form. Okay, your turn. Pause the video. See if you can write the slope-intercept form and the standard form of the equation that passes through 5, 3, and 0, negative 2. If we label our points, we have x1, y1, x2, y2. And first we want to figure out the slope, so that's going to be y2 minus y1, change in y over change in x. That would be negative 2 minus 3 over 0 minus 5. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. So we have a slope of 1. Pick your favorite of the two points. I see one point happens to have a 0 in it, and I like using zeros. So we're going to use a slope of 1, and I'm going to use that second point, 0, negative 2. But really, it doesn't matter. You can use either one. And this one now gets rewritten as x1, y1, because we're going to plug it into point-slope form. So in point-slope form, this would be y minus the y-coordinate, negative 2, equals m, which is 1, times x minus the x-coordinate, 0. And we might clean this up, so that would be y minus negative becomes plus 2. I don't need to distribute the 1, and I can actually get rid of the 0, right, because x minus 0 is just x. And last step, let's get y by itself, subtract 2 from both sides. So the slope-intercept form of this equation will be y equals x minus 2. Now, if you look carefully at this point, you actually didn't need to go through those motions because you were already given the y-intercept. If you're given the y-intercept, once you know the slope, you can just plug those right into slope-intercept form. Sometimes we just kind of like to just do one thing and do that every time, and that's fine too. So I went through the steps, but keep in mind that if you recognize that was the y-intercept, you didn't have to do those. Okay, next we want to get this in standard form. Now I'm going to get a little creative here. Since x already has a positive coefficient, I'm actually going to move everything else. So I'm going to subtract y from both sides, and I'm going to add 2 to both sides. This way it keeps x positive for me. So this is going to, those are going to cancel on the left. I'm going to have 2 equals. Then here I have x minus y. If you want to, you can turn it around since equality is commutative to say x minus y is equal to 2. And this would be our standard form. We have integer coefficients, so we are good to go. Okay, last example. What are we going to do first? The only thing we can do when we have two points and we're doing something with lines, find that slope. So we have x1, y1, and x2, y2. Plug into the slope formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Then I would have m equals negative 8 minus negative 8 over 3 minus 6. This gives me 0 over negative 3. And 0 divided by anything besides 0 equals 0. So we have another special line. We have a slope of 0. What types of lines have slopes of 0? 
These would be our horizontal lines, our horizontal friends. So horizontal lines, we can skip using point slope form. Um, they're always of the form y is equal to b. And what does that happen to be? Look at your y coordinates. They both equal negative 8. So we're going to say y equals negative 8. This is both sl uh, slope intercept form and standard form. So we're just going to call it, uh, this is the answer to both. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So these have been examples of writing linear equations when we're given two points. Thank you for stopping by.